We worship this morning according to the common service on page 15 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in mercy, you sent your one and only Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin and transform us into the likeness of his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson on this Sunday after Christmas is from Isaiah chapter 60, beginning at verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. 
Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. So far the Old Testament lesson. Our psalm of the day, these words of Psalm 45, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. So far the psalm of the day. And our epistle lesson from Hebrews chapter 1 begins at verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter according to St. Luke, beginning at the eighth verse. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 19 in the front of the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text in our continuing study of St. Luke's Gospel from this second chapter. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Here are good tidings of great joy. Let us look at who received this good news, what this good news is, and what reactions it produced. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Well, who would you inform? Send the angel Gabriel to the White House, Buckingham Palace, the Kremlin, 
phone up CNN, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox News? Who would you tell? You probably wouldn't send out printed invitations first to some bag lady on the streets of Chicago, would you? Or to the graveyard shift doing cleanup at McDonald's? Or to some guys out of county lockup doing work out on the highway? No. But look at who received good tidings of great joy. Some illiterate shepherds watching over flocks that were perhaps not even their own. In the days of King David when he wrote the 23rd Psalm, shepherding was a respectable way to make a living. But by the dawn of the New Testament age, being a shepherd was sort of low on the totem pole socially. They had a bad reputation for being shiftless, lazy, troublemakers, closing down the bars. These would probably not have been the first people you would announce good tidings of great joy when God came in the flesh. So the word of St. Paul is true, isn't it? When he told the Corinthians, Brothers, think of what you were when you were called to faith. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world, to shame the strong. He chose the little things and the despised things and the things that are not, so that no one may boast in his presence. So God comes to you and to me also, in our own little places, in our own little lives, in houses and yards no bigger than what you and I grew up in. No more deserving. No, no more deserving, but yet far more privileged, even than the shepherds who received all of this in that one fantastic announcement, good news. Who gets to see it? Well, it's kind of like that nifty little line in the movie Mary Poppins, where Bert the chimney sweep is up on the roof overlooking all of London. And he says, what did I tell you? There's the whole world at your feet, and who gets to see it? The birds, the stars, and the chimney sweeps. There's the whole road to glory at your feet. Who gets to see it? A virgin mother, a rough-handed carpenter, some minimum wage shepherds, and you and I. What is this great message that we get to hear? The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. There's not one line in the whole Christmas account that would suggest that God seeks us out at the point of our human greatness or our human achievement. He comes to us rather where we are at our worst and at our lowest 
And he gives to us this announcement. You see, that's what good tidings of great joy are. What is this good news? It is an announcement. It is simply that. That's what it was to Adam and Eve when God announced that there would be a hero born of woman who would crush the serpent with his heel. That's what it was to all the prophets who longed for the coming of Messiah. That's what it was to lowly shepherds outside the little village of Bethlehem keeping watch over their flock by night. The good news, the good tidings, it's not a lecture, a law, a set of guidelines to follow. The law has its place. It shows our great need of a Savior. But the law is not a saving word. It's a good word. It's God's word. It's a holy word. But it can't save you. The law is all about do and don't do. But the good news is not this. The good tidings is not a wagging finger. The good news is simply this, an announcement of good stuff that has happened. You know when a news guy breaks in with a special news bulletin, he doesn't tell you to go do something. He tells you about something that either is happening or has happened. The law may tell you to do certain things, but the gospel does not say, do this or go and do likewise. No, the gospel announcement is, hey, look what has already happened. Look what is already finished. Look what is already done. This is the good news of what Christ Jesus has done for us. The angels bring good tidings of great joy. And it's all about meeting us in our fear. Because the good news comes to us amid our own failure and amid our own sin. And amid our fears in which we run away from God. And we hide from God. <coughs> knowing what we are. All that we've been. But now here comes the announcement. What's the first thing the angel says? Fear not. Because we are. Don't be afraid anymore. People have tried to illustrate this sort of thing. For instance, try cozying up sometime to the fish in your aquarium. It doesn't matter how many times you change the water for them and you set the temperature just exactly right and you give them all the right nutrients. doesn't matter. Every time you approach that fish tank, they look at you as some kind of terrifying god. They look at you as some type of monster. And as soon as you open up the lid, they go scurrying to hide under the racks from you because no matter what you do for them, they don't trust your good intentions toward them. And that's how you and I are by nature. Not really trusting God's good intentions. On a very freezing winter night, an old farmer took pity on birds that were vainly banging against the window panes of his warm house. He went outside and he opened the barn door to give them a place of refuge. He flipped on the light. He backed off a respectable distance. Nothing. He put down bird seed to entice them to go into the barn, but no, nothing. Finally, the farmer gave up. The birds chose to freeze to death rather than trust this old guy. He went back in the house, he looked out the window, and he thought to himself, if only I myself could become a little bird, I could perhaps get them to trust me and lead them to safety. But for a man to become a fish, 
or a bird is nothing comparing, compared to God becoming a baby. But he did. You're not afraid of a baby, are you? Became a baby. So he would stop being afraid of God. That we would understand that he has brought down the fence that we set up by our sins. That we would understand how much he loves us. And that he has made you and me to be royal priests. Sons and daughters of the king of kings. Members of his family whom he wishes to embrace. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Not sadness, not fear, but great joy. For God himself is born to you. He has become your brother. He is Christ the Lord. This is joy. This is Peace on earth, God's peace, which has brought down the barrier between us and the Father. Goodwill, God's will, God's goodwill toward you and me. All of this, good tidings, great joy, which changes absolutely everything. Now, not only who received the message, not only what this good news is, good tidings, great joy, but also the reactions it produced. It came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The reviews of what happened among men are always mixed. So it is with the shepherds. They have heard the good tidings, but now what will they do with it? The sermon has been preached, but will they take it to heart? The angels cannot believe the good tidings for them. The Holy Spirit alone can work faith in their hearts. But the, the shepherds believe the message. And when they believe the good tidings of great joy, then they will know what to think about it and how to feel about it. And nobody will have to tell them. They go with haste. They hurry off to find Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger. And when they'd seen their God born for them, and when they had worshipped him, they made known abroad to others. Nobody had to tell them. They didn't have to go take a course on it. Everybody wants to be the first to tell really good news. And they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And then what about others? Well, all they that heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. We're not told whether they did more. Whether they then believed it themselves. Whether they simply gave it no more thought, whether they said as old Scrooge did that it was just a bit of undigested beef or an underdone potato, whether it really didn't matter, but it happens still. Many hear every year the good tidings of great joy that a Savior has been born to them, and then they go on their merry way and it makes no difference any longer in their lives. It does not occur to them that God might have more to say to them. 
more to teach them. That God might have a deeper friendship to forge with them. That God wants them to have a relationship with him that is deeper than all of that. And Mary pondered all of these things, treasured them up in her heart. She thought about these things. She meditated on them. You and I, we can do this too. Fifteen minutes a day, folks. Read a chapter, part of a chapter of God's book. Meditate on it. Chew on it. Make it your routine. God speaks to you in the scriptures. Now you also can speak to God in prayer. For spread of the gospel. For God's hand upon your family and your church. For the pure doctrine to be preached. For God to watch over those who are unfortunate and who need help. To give praise to God and to thank Him. To make your request known unto God. All of these things, these two, are the ways in which you can ponder, treasure up in your heart what God has done for you. And the shepherds with the shepherds returned. They went back to the same old job, trying to eke out a living, and the job hadn't changed, but they had changed. They would never be the same. They returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen just as it was told to them. Now in these days when the rivers of blood and tears so often overflow their banks, when brows are creased by pain and time, and the earth is plowed deeply by war, and injustice and broken hearts and demonic false doctrines. Now the angels have an announcement to give you. Good tidings of great joy! Can we ever be the same again? Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us offer up our prayers today for Norma Anderson, who will undergo surgery tomorrow, and for Arlen Schmidt, who is home from the hospital following knee replacement. Let us pray. O Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servants and restore their strength. You gave your Son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with them and bless the medical means employed on their behalf with your healing power. We commit them to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God for Jesus' sake, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. 
May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.